And then I got, I think I just got one more, man. Yeah, it's performance. Oh, yes. And I watched uh, sidebar about, or just perf- talking about performance to start. Love the film, the movie ends. I just start, I just watch all the special features. And on one of the videos of the special features, the last, it's like a 25 minute little documentary. And the last like three minutes on your DVD, um, it starts to skip a little bit. Okay. And, I'm, and they're like, right when they talk about the, what the ending means to you, it starts to skip. And then I see if the clip is on YouTube and it is. And then I just had a moment where I'm like, shit, man, with DVDs, <laughs> you know, like you want to buy them and you want to like support it. But that's kind of rough when you could just find it online quick, you know? Yeah, I don't know what happened. I, I mean, I bought that one a while ago, but that's when you talk about this, it just takes one little thing to yeah. mess it up. But I'm glad you found it online. I know that that was a cool behind the scenes on the making of it. Yeah. Too. I really like that. Yeah. I, I, I was very happy with the film. Um, it was weird too, because the entire film doesn't skip. It works fine. All the special features work fine. And then it's like, like the last couple minutes on this thing. And then it, a little little wonky. Um, before I go into it, I just I have a couple of questions. What, what, when's the first time you watched performance? Um, the first time I saw it, I don't know, it must have been about 15, 16, 17 years ago. I can't remember. It, it was in my whole phase of, um, I was trying to get all the British gangster movies in that I thought were kind of like the pillars. So I already yeah. I get Carter I, when I was really young. I saw that one, which I loved. Mm -hmm. you know um and then you had you know like the snatch and lock stock and those are kind of the modern ones yeah and um i'd gone back to rediscover like mona lisa long good friday and then this was one i had heard about um you know nicholas rogue and it was cool because of oh mick jagger in this in this role so i read read about it it was on a lot of lists of great british films so i just bought it without seeing it because i feel like i felt like i would get a lot out of it yeah um and it was cool. Like I, I saw all the the DNA of the Guy Ritchie stuff in there. Um, the, the scene where he's singing the song that whatever that Mr. Turner song is. Yeah. Like a music, it's like a music video. I see you down in San Antonio on a hot and dusty night. You we were eating eggs and Sammy's when the black man there drew his knife. Oh, you drown that Jew in Rampton if he washed his sleeveless shirt. You know, that Spanish-speaking gentleman, the one that we all call Kurt. Wait, they film yeah. it? Yeah. The ending is my kind of ending, where it's just confusing as hell. You don't know what, what's going on. And yeah. he looks like him, but he's, you know, when he's not. The music was awesome. Even, like, they, they had, like, a, a Middle Eastern kind of sound in there um, in some of the love scenes. Um the setting, the characters, the dialogue. It just, to me, it's like performance, Get Carter, uh, Mona Lisa, Long Good Friday, all are the movies that kind of end up becoming the future British gangster movies like Snatch and Lockstock. Like these are the, those that's like Mount Rushmore, I think of British gangster films that that you should see. In addition to, there's a movie called Brighton Rock from I think 1947. That's like the first British gangster movie, but in a different way. It's not like the sleek, you know, the accents and all that kind of stuff and the crime. But I would say if you watch Get Carter performance, Mona Lisa and Long Good Friday, yeah, you've got kind of four of the greats in, in history. So I, probably like 16, 17 years ago, I, I must have seen it. Um, I have not seen it recently, but I it's one that I probably hang on to a little bit better in terms of some of the moments that yeah if there's anything that you stood out to you i'll probably remember it once you reference it what what makes a film a swinging london film i i think it it's the 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 nature of the movie where it was very free willing and swingers and like you know the whole era of coming from this because i think the movie was 1970 so you're coming right out of that hippie swinger, that Austin right. Powers, the dancing, the music, the drugs, yeah. the the freedom behind the telling the story that you want, moving away from the Hollywood conventions that exist and say that I want to tell a British story. Um, I think the casting, the setting, the sexuality of the movie, 
drugs, all that kind of stuff, you know, plays a big part. <clears throat> and I think even the woman in the film was like known as um, one of the actresses. I think she went out with Eric Clapton or some, or, or okay. some, okay. some big names. Like she was in, she, no, she was um, Keith Richards' girlfriend, I think, um, who was obviously in, in, Rolling, yeah. in the Rolling Stones. Right. So I think that that put, put a little tension. So yeah. swinging London, I think it's all like that '60s era, yeah. the Austin Powers. That's my definition. I don't know. I don't know if they defined it or. So em emphasizing. No, no. That's. I wanted to kind of confirm. That's what it. That's what it means. Um, I got. A, I got a little bit of random notes. Kind of want to graze through with you. Um, a line that they said on the dot. Well, okay. So what I thought was really neat was Donald Camel and Nicholas Roeg um, directed this together. Mm -hmm. But Nicholas Roeg was the cinematographer. And then I just love thinking that like as a tag team situation. I just think that's super efficient. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting. So the film was banned for two years before they released it. And so I was doing the math and it would make Mick Jagger 25 in the film, which I just thought was kind of interesting. I was just curious, like how old is he in this? And I also thought it was kind of fun. They shot a music video in the film and so did we. Like we... In our first film, we got the experience of how would we shoot a music video? We got to kind of flex that muscle a little bit. So it was fun just to see like what their experience was like and what ours was like to kind of compare. And um, a quote that they were saying about the making of the film is um, they had a mentality that anything that felt right was going to work when they were doing the filmmaking. I thought that was kind of cool to hear. Um, the opening scene where it's like the helicopter shot and then we're following the car, which is kind of a fun, that kind of book in with the ending. But um, the, it, the first flash where we cut to just a brief moment of like, a you know, some sex, uh, I, I thought it was really cool. It reminded me of how they did, how they talk about Fight Club, how they just show like that one, you feel it as it being just a frame. You feel it like they put it in in one single frame. Um, it was kind of gnarly to see, uh, can I do it on this? The scene where she like grabs the guy like grabs hit, hit her like back and you could see yeah i don't even have it the gripping of the skin some of those shots you know where you're not just grabbing the person you can see the skin being grabbed kind of rough um there's some interesting visuals in there um even that fight club moment that you're talking about is yeah. a persona right yeah yeah exactly that. yes yeah that's yeah, cool just to, to, all the dna of it yeah keep going keep going what about persona <laughs> Just really, you know, the same thing as yeah. the DNA of all that stuff and people being inspired by various things, but it's a good reference. I know what you mean by the flash. And, and they do a good job of like, you felt it be like, they're gonna flash one frame and then they're gonna flash a couple different frames. Uh, it was a fun progression, but the first time that frame popped up that way, uh, it's definitely like a Fight Club persona moment. Um, uh, when, they, when, the, when the car finally uh, parks, they like punch in and just zoom in on the window and you think you're going to look at a person inside the window and it's a tree. It's a reflection of the tree, but then it makes sense because the ending we get with who's in the car, who's in the back seat, you don't know. Mm -hmm. So there's like fun notes I had where when I was like re looking through my notes, I was like, Oh, cool. It wasn't just being artsy and kind of going for it. There was certain intentions by some of the bizarre choices, you know? Um, uh, uh, there's a scene briefly um, where he gets up really unique. Um, I had his name, James. When he first gets up, he does a sissy squat. He didn't do a squat. He did like a unique squat where you, you put the, you stand up from like, you do like a sumo position with your legs. And then he stood up from the balls of his feet. And it was really funny to see that was like a very specific sissy squat uh, reference. It's an exercise. I thought it was kind of really weird to see. Um, I thought the slang is really fun. Um, anything from, oh, I have I have notes too where um, they say filthy two times in that movie performance, which I just thought was like a fun note. Um, uh, overall, I'm just going, I'm just grazing through. Uh, over, overall, I think it's a really fun art house kind of film. I have notes where it reminds me of uh, Dreamers and um, uh, why to ma tambien a little bit just because of the you know mm -hmm. the sharing you know a little bit of the how they how they do sexuality and how it's kind of that feeling of like the the parties all taking place in a room you know like one kind of environment for a little bit um the one who makes it who really makes it is the one who achieves madness 
is a is a quote I wrote to Mick Jagger's character. And then right around that scene when the editing happened, I saw a lot of references from uh, El Topo. Mm -hmm. You get that a bit in there or no? Yep, definitely. Yeah. Um, the uh, ending when Mick Jagger or whoever, you know, someone gets shot and it's like going inside the head, that kind of motion. It made me also think of like uncut gems, right? How yep. we're going inside and the first step of how do we film something like that, right? Yeah, I like that connection. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I've never heard of this film, but you could tell there's a lot of influence from this. On, um, I have like three pages of like thick notes. I'm just trying to. Don't scare me, break the rules. It's one of those movies that that um, like diehard film fans and British people will. Um, we'll know more about then like I, I saw the thing you I just saw uh, this afternoon the thing you sent about sightseers that they had put up on um on uh, Instagram and that was cool to see because that's like a British movie that most probably Americans or international people wouldn't know about yeah um and it's cool to see that and th this movie's not quite like that but Guy Ritchie and, and Tarantino a bunch of people are this is a, one of those movies that they usually cite as inspirational or favorite or really enjoying it. So it's under the radar. Not a lot of people will know about it, considering, you know, Mick Jagger and all that. It's weird to see some movies where I look at it as like a, there's a first, second, third act. And then there's some movies where I like in my head, I just make it like part one, part two. And like mm -hmm. part one is like getting to the house. Part two is we're at the house. You know, we're kind of then taking it all in. Um, it's always intense when you see someone really inject themselves. And I, and I saw like in the special feature, she just injects herself with B12. Yeah. That's, that's still like a really intense shot um, in doing that, you know, kind of going for that. Um, I have a couple questions on the filmmaker, Donald Camel. Mm -hmm. um, in 1996, he always worked with Frank Mazzola, the editor, and it's the same editor as The Party. I was thinking of you when I saw that. Um, but Donald Camel, um, he killed himself in 1996. That's right. That's, and in the last film he did was a film called Wild Side. And have you ever seen Wild Side? I've not seen that one. It looks, I, think, I believe it has Christopher Walken in it on the, on the cover. I definitely want to check it out. But within a couple months of that film, he killed himself. And it started me kind of open that door of like, um, do you know, I just wanted to get your opinion on it. Or if you knew anything on it, anything more about how he killed himself or. Um, I, I don't. I, obviously, I, I I know it was suicide, but I I think it was he shot himself Gnarly. or overdose. I it's I, I'd read it a long time ago, but I guess he was dealing with um, a lot of different things. So um, yeah. I think everything just kind of cut up to him, unfortunately. But I mean, they he were... left his mark with um, with this movie, and yeah. even Nicholas, even for Nicholas Rogue too, it was a. I mean, he went on to become like a legendary. Uh, yeah, he's gnarly. <laughs> legendary director himself too. That some, something kind of fun they did was uh, Frank Mazzola. The studio had brought him in after they had a couple editors, and um, he the studio. One of the biggest things they said was, uh, "We said Mick Jagger's in this, but he doesn't show up till at least halfway into the film." So they like randomly slice him in in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then also they throw him in painting kind of randomly. And when you watch it, it is random, but you kind of dig it. And you do appreciate seeing Mick Jagger kind of kind of sooner. But then you, as you watch it, you're like, that was the only reason. It's just kind of funny to think like what will, you know, what the studios will do or what we'll do for the audience, you know? They didn't want to have people wait because he was the big draw in that movie. I mean, at that time, this is like the prime of Rolling Stones and everything. And he never really did a movie. So they didn't want to have him on the poster and on the cover. Mm -hmm. And then get people angry because you know 30 minutes in, 40 minutes in, he's still not there. So it was a smart thing. They just sprinkled him in and then yeah, then brought him in when they they thought was the a best opportunity. What's your ending of this film? What, what do I think? Like what yeah. was my takeaway? Yeah. I just love the idea of it maybe even being the same person. Because of the because of the that persona shot you get, right? Yeah, hundred percent like persona where that it was it, it kind of like a going back to your fight club reference mm -hmm. as well where it's the same person but they don't know it and you know the the ending is not really they ended in a way where they don't tell you but i just love that 
you can't really see anything. And then you cut to the limo and just kind of see him going by and you go, wait, what? I just thought he, you know, did yeah, this. So I, I love that idea that it's this, it's a similar, that's just the same person, like split personality type thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's a cool ending, but that's the fun thing is that they didn't tell you. So yeah, you know, it's like you said, in that documentary, they're trying to emphasize, well, what do you think was the, what was your takeaway from it? You, I, uh, persona. I think if they didn't give us that persona reference, it wouldn't have been, th that was, that was, a, that was it to tell us, I think, to that, the same person, they're going back and forth and um, it's essentially him. Or if we were to pick who, who survived between the two, it's Mick Jagger, you know, I know it's the same person. I essentially think that's it, you know, but I could see some people being like, um, uh, it's, it's James Chaz's character, but he now has the mentality of Mick Jagger or something, you know. Could be too. Yeah. yeah. No, but I, I, I'm with the persona, man. I think that's great. Um, Just him in the wig. It was like a, almost like a psycho moment. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? I remember weird. the first time I saw it, I had to rewind it. Yeah. I said, wait, let me see that again. And I had to go back and watch the scene where he gets killed. And, and I said, wait, I thought I saw him dead and not. so it was cool it was a fun moment i uh, enjoyed those types of endings kendra had that exact moment she goes wait that can't be him he just got shot and i'm like well no it's the same guy and he got and he got shot yeah. um it's fun those little moments where she gives him a, a you just see this like super large mushroom and he's like how much did you give him and he just like shows this large kind of this large mushroom um when you when you watch the special features too that's cool that they're sharing um some of the guys behind the scenes, they just threw in in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was kind of cool. Like they, they gave them a couple lines because um, they just looked the part for the scene. And they, it was funny, even the scenes they gave them, there was one scene where they framed the guy by just showing his mouth. And then when they show him again, they just show like, they like just show like a corner. And it's kind of a fun way to, um, if it wasn't a strong performance, that's a fun way to trick the audience too, right? You mm -hmm. know? film it unique so you're not it's not all eyes are on him kind of framed right. and yeah man i thought uh, great thank you for sharing that film with me i thought it was awesome and it's funny there are certain films like uh white dog and performance where i'm like oh i thank you like i totally get why you gave me this and like it builds a little fire they're great films well you had a you had a good momentum going with um watching get carter watching mona lisa mm -hmm. watching long good friday and then watching yeah. sexy beast so I figured I'm like, hey, you're watching all the British gangster films that are iconic. So this yeah. is the this is kind of one of the first ones. Like, you know, a year or two before Get Carter, it was this. This kind of set everything forward. Yeah. But those are the main ones. Like if I were to pick like five of the best British gangster films, yeah. 60 Beasts, Get Carter, Mona cool. Lisa, Performance, all those are. So I, I thought it was good timing because then you could be able to see the influencer starts to compare him and say, oh, well, this is a little bit different in style or, yeah. you know, Bob Hoskins, Ray Weinstone and all the styles that, that came from that. So um, I'm glad you had a chance to, to see it. I still have your pile that yeah, right. I, I'm going to try to put a dent in once classes yeah. finish up. I have the shadow of violence. I'm looking at it right now. That's the first one I want to see from the, cool. the pile because I, I was looking forward to watching that. Yeah, and it's a it's a 2019 film, right? So it's some kind of new and or even uh, is it 2020? Anyway, um, yeah, 20, I'm looking this year it came out. I'm looking forward to what you think about it. Um, I do have a note here from Sexy since you brought up Sexy Beast, the opening the, the performance titles reminded me of Sexy Beast the way it just kind of pauses. It's yeah. good. That's a good move. That's a really good move. And it has good rewatch value. Like you can yeah. watch that movie yeah. a few times and find different things and things that you miss. Yeah. Um, it's probably inspiring me to watch it again because it's been a while. Uh, but great underrated film, I think, doesn't get enough credit. Yeah. No, I, um, the, the image they show, this is where I, I don't know the name, I'm going to butcher this, but like they show an image of an older man's face as they kill off um, James Chaz's character. And it's also the same author of like a book that's earlier in the film. And so there's like little little messages if you want to like dive deeper into it that's there yeah, for you it was Borges the author yeah dude I remember that because they zoom in right on the book or yes so yeah. there's a that's the other thing too is like this era was the era of like a counterculture and throwing in your literary references and your music references and your movie references and your art references and it's like you know people talk about Tarantino and references but man 
people have been doing it for a long time. It's not anything new. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The um, uh, having yeah, good film. So that's, I got I got all kinds of random comments on it. I over overall, um, I don't know who I could recommend that to out of my out of my peers because it's a harder film to watch. But in general, there's there's certain scenes I would take from for the next film for shot references that I thought were really cool. You know, good. Um, good. Yeah.